Spider-Man, Spider-Man, these games belong in a garbage can. Hello there, I'm Nick, and this is The Game Apologist, where we look for the good in bad games. Terrible movie tie-in games are no stranger to this industry, but Spider-Man 3 stung a little worse than others, because the game and movie prior to this release was super good. Spider-Man 2 was, at the time, the gold standard, both as a superhero blockbuster movie and as a superhero game. It was here for the first time you could freely swing around Manhattan as everyone's favorite bug boy. Both the movie and game have shown their age, but at the end of the day, the fun and quality still shine through. So when it came time for the inevitable sequel, and this time on a new generation of systems, surely these games would improve upon what's come before, wrapping up a brilliant trilogy of movies with the most anticipated of villains, a stunning conclusion, and building upon games that seem to just get better and better. I'm going to die! Or, you know, not do that. Yeah, like the movie it's related to, this proved to be a disappointing follow-up in any way you wanted to play it. And you had so many ways to be let down. You had, of course, the cross-platform release of the PC, PS3, and Xbox 360 versions by Treyarch, a similarly plain but separately developed version that came out on the Wii, PS2, and PSP. And you also had a couple other versions for the Game Boy Advance and the DS. That's eight different versions of essentially the same game. How did you guys screw up eight separate times? I went online to see how well these games have been covered and found a lot of people calling this an underrated gem. But going back to the reviews of the day, Guys, I feel like people were super forgiving of this game. Just listen to Greg Miller doing his best Tobey Maguire impression. Spider-Man 3 looks really good at first glance. His web sling is very fluid. The buildings look nice and realistic. And just overall, you get that initial feeling of, wow, this looks really, really good. <laughs> that dude sounds a lot like shirtless Spider-Man. I've seen people call this a hidden gem, but I haven't really found anything too extensive about every version of the game. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. Yes, that's right. We are going to look at each and every game with the title of Spider-Man 3. And I can't... I can't tell you how bad of an idea this was. Bruce, I've had it with your sass. I can only hear the same joke so many times. What would Spider-Man be without his spider powers? I'll tell you, he'd be... Man. Is that what you came here to play? Man 3? Regardless of the amount of games on display here, there are really only four versions of Note. Almost all of them feature an open world where you swing around Manhattan taking on missions loosely based on the movie, but also dealing with extra stories and villains to help fill out your playtime. The only two games that really deviate away from this setup are the GBA and DS editions, of course. Both of these are side-scrolling platformers, and yes, even between these two, you'll find entirely different playstyles. We will get to these differences a little later, but we're starting off with a Treyarch version. That was clearly the major focus on the marketing side of things, and that will be our major focus today. Every other edition seems to have been derived from it, and guys, there's just, there is so much to talk about here. All right, so the first thing we see when we start this game off is not a big sprawling open world to swing around in, but instead, a close-up shot of, uh, who, who is this guy? Seriously, who is this guy? He's not from the movies. He's not even from the comic books. He's just another jerk in some knockoff Gears of War armor. Well, this nobody is in charge of a bunch of other nobodies, and they're doing a real big naughty by ignoring fire safety procedures. Leonard, we told you not to put aluminum in the microwave. Now look what you did. I just wanted to heat up my burrito. This burning building acts as a tutorial, while Mr. Campbell snarks his way through the controls. What? do you do? And when it comes to the punchy, kicky stuff, it starts off fine enough, but they will sometimes narrate what you're supposed to do, and other times they'll just completely stop the action and tell you what to do. And the spider sense stuff is so weird this time around. You don't click a button to do a quick dodge. You instead hold down a bumper to slow down time and sometimes press X. I don't know, it's not very well implemented. Oh, and the spider sense also acts as a detective vision two years before the detective vision. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a Batman can. From here, the game finally opens up into a giant map where we can <sighs> play more tutorials. Whatever, it's fine. Let's just get to some good old-fashioned web swing. Oh dear. All right, so this janky lesson aside, the web swinging's actually just fine. It's a lot of fun zipping around New York. Problem is, that's about all there is to do. I mean, you have some racing. You can go on combat tours, defuse bombs with stupid minigames, and pick up 
hearts? As far as I can tell, these don't really unlock anything. None of these side missions unlock secret bonuses, moves, or anything to enhance the gameplay. It's really only here to give you something else to do or go achievement hunting. You'll unlock new combos and the like with the main missions, but even that feels random. Sometimes you'll get health upgrades, and most of the time you're gonna get combos, all of which are listed in this unorganized mess in the pause menu. And even though the movie is jam-packed full of villains, the game spends very little time on the main movie antagonists. Considering the little time these developers probably get to work with the material provided by the movie, they cleverly just use these as closing missions to acts, filling up the rest of the time taking on other scenarios crafted exclusively for this game. A good portion of that is taken up by these gangs that are, once again, made exclusively for this game. And hey look, I'm all for original creations, but come on man, we ain't coming to your game for that, we want some dank references. Also these guys are super lame! You have the aforementioned H-bombers in your standard generic armor you see in every video game. I still don't care who this guy is. Fallout Raiders that are too ugly even for Fallout. Spider-Man, you can't just be wailing on some random guys wearing spiked shoulder pads. That's profiling. Standard potentially offensive Asian martial arts gang. This is for Iron Fist. This is for Spider-Man 3. I don't know which one is worse. And an army of Lolitas. Welcome to Hot Topic. Every t-shirt is buy one, get one half off. Led by not Harley Quinn. No! For crying out loud, Spider-Man. If you can dodge a bullet, you can dodge a bouquet. These guys are at least a little more interesting than the standard thugs you're up against in these kind of games. And they all lead up to an actual Spider-Man baddie, the Kingpin. That's, uh, that's the closest the Raimi movies ever get to the iconic villain. This is his first appearance. There he is, just, uh, standing in a corner, grunting while the world's saddest press conference is underway. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Honestly, there are a healthy amount of classic Spider-Man baddies, and while it's been a minute since I've played the first two movie games, I do remember some of these guys showing up in the previous titles. And unless I'm mistaken, there's at least some continuity between these games. Spider-Man seems to remember everyone he's fought before, and I caught him even making a reference to Mysterio from Game 2. He even recognizes Kraven the Hunter, who only appeared in an Xbox exclusive level in the first movie game. And it's kinda cool to see a character arc for the likes of Scorpion, who starts off looking stupid, then kinda cool near the end of his story. You know, the one where you have to invade Mrs. Doubtfire's giant mecha fortress off the coast of Manhattan? And even though they tease it in the movies, it's only in this game we finally see Dr. Kurt Connors become the lizard. Granted, it's not a great story. It starts off with you taking pictures of a hot dog stand and Larry the lizard, and your first encounter with the lizard man. Yeah, that one. It's not even Dr. Connors. I I'm getting ahead of myself. There's a lot of story for a lot of the villains. Between the Kingpin, Scorpion, the Lizard, and uh, this guy, it feels like three or four separate stories that could have been in their own games. Problem is, they're all kind of janky. <laughs> You can tell this game was rushed, and it's not like it came from some inexperienced developer. This was made by Treyarch, and they would go on to become one of the most profitable developers in existence now that they're calling the duties. But here, yeah, the game needed a little more time in the oven. Or, in this case, the spider egg sack. Yeah! You can see the jank everywhere in this game. The most famous of examples being these insane character models as demonstrated with JJ's best impression of the wacky inflatable tube man. <laughs> and other janky headaches like that weird quick clip with every transition between the cutscenes, buttons not always reacting when you press them, fights looking like a hyperactive child smashing action figures together, the controls really not allowing for much in the way of precision, and the camera going to war with you anytime you're on a wall. <gasps> These are all signs of a rushed product. And I do mean product. They slap on not one, but two different officially branded Spider-Man merch logos at the top of this thing. This got a demand a refund on his security doors. They don't work. Peter, I wouldn't be giving anyone any ideas about asking for refunds for a shoddy product. But the real offender are the boss fights. I've seen some other people complain about them, but guys, you just, you just don't understand. There are just, there's so many sloppy decisions just put to- <laughs> You know what, let me just walk you through a mission to show you what I'm talking about. Alright, so in the Lizard storyline, you take Peter in the sewer. And by the way, get used to that, because he's going to spend more time down here than the Ninja Turtles. 
What is this supposed to be? Where did that come from? Did that come from you? Did you make that? How did you make that? Game, how do you think reptiles reproduce? Is Larry the mother? Anyway, this particular mission sees you running into Craven. And while this won't be your first experience with the tedium that are the bosses of this game, this one is particularly cruel. As you'll have to deal with the usual nonsense of slowly whittling down his health, but also deal with him anamorphing out of nowhere and making clones of himself. <laughs> This fight takes forever. It's hard, and even though the game will throw health at you in the most random of places, there is none to be found here. If you die, you have to go through all of this sloppy nonsense from the start, and that's just the first fight of this mission. Yeah, you heard me right. This is the first boss battle of this mission. You then have to fight this idiot a second time, except now he goes invisible, and you also have to deal with Monster Men. And if you thought you were done there, Oh no, you stupid baby. You then have to go up against, uh, Godzilla. Well, that explains the mess in the sewers anyway. You have yet another tedious fight that not only rips off Mario 64's Bowser fights, but somehow makes them worse. You have to do this until you drop a shield, and then you continue to smack around this idiot until you're forced to do a quick dodge and just... <sighs> Just look at this mess. This guy will hop around on the walls and then lunge at you, giving you no time to move out of the way. So of course you use that slow motion spider sense, but look what happens. He was facing an entirely different direction. The game doesn't even hide that he's using a homing attack on you. And if you die, guess what? Gotta start all over again. These are three separate multi-layered boss fights all in one mission. And that would almost be tolerable if this was the end of the game. But it's not, it's just the end of the lizard story. And they will do this nonsense for everyone. Just one of these fights takes forever, slowly taking down the life bar while you have to do the same thing over and over again. You can do whatever a spider can, but most of the time you're just going to be figuring out what button combination you need to spam to survive a fight. Nothing is super well telegraphed, and all of them end with stupid quick time events. If you miss any, and you will, you're forced to do it over and over again, sometimes getting kicked back into the fight to whittle down the life bar yet again. Seriously, the sandstorm sequence moves so fast you actually have to know what button prompts are coming to even stand a chance, and even knowing what was ahead led to my death more than a few times. And you might be wondering why I haven't mentioned the black suit at any point prior to this. Well, that's because you play over half of the game before it's even introduced. And I'm going to take a second to complain about this because I don't know where else I'm going to get the chance. This is what you guys gave us for the black suit? Are you kidding me? I've waited my entire life to see the big screen debut of this thing, and all you did was dip it in ink. Like the suit change, the gameplay change is minimal with the new costume. There's a rage mode, and like everything else, it's not very well implemented. They do at least try to establish some gameplay elements. It will react horribly to sound waves in that lizard fight, and you need that rage mode to survive Kingpin. And when it's time to finally fight Venom, he does get substantially harder when he goes into a rage mode, and you need vibrations to make him vulnerable. And the thrill rides go from collecting hearts to scaring MJ as you swing around, going from cute little tricks to impress your girlfriend to the commands literally saying, do anything. Really game? Anything? All right, you asked for it. God, I'm a monster. This also changes the story as well. As you could see from my terrifying slow walk up to her apartment, MJ is freaked out by Peter. Spider-Man will become more aggressive with all these factions and characters you spent all this time with, totally changing the tone set up by most of the game. Or, uh, well, I mean, uh, implied tone, anyway. You've hardly said three words all night. Is everything all right? I figured you were talking enough for both of us. Peter, what's gotten into you lately? Nothing that's stopping your gums from flapping wouldn't solve. Peter, sweetie, we've talked about this. Is this a joke or are you actually angry? I, I can't tell. People give Tobey Maguire a lot of crap for phoning it in with this game. But going back to the movies, I mean, is he really? <laughs> well, Pete's taking the subway. Don't mind us, she just needs to use the elevator. Wait! Who are you? You know who I am. I do. Your friendly neighborhood? Man. 
Is that what you came here to play? Don't you worry about it, Toby. You just save up all those emotions for that ugly crying at the end of the movie. I mean, none of these guys are really trying. But if you really want to hear phoning it in, look no further than Topher Grace. Let's take a look at this scene. Here, we see Eddie trying to frame Spider-Man with a crime. Spider-Man comes in and solves it by... Okay, I guess that works. So from there, Eddie gets really mad. Look at that. He's mirroring JJ's signature giant lizard moves. Giant lizards! He was just embarrassed by Spider-Man. Then he bellows out towards the dude in a fit of humiliation, rage, and... Well, I mean, the dude's on the side of a building. You probably need to raise your voice if you want him to hear you. It's silly, but this is really telegraphing how mad this dude is. Now let's watch that again without my commentary. Oh, you think you're smart, buddy? Well, think again. I hit a bunch of cameras around here, and now I have an even better shot than I was planning. You punching me in the jaw and taking my camera. So thanks. These people get paid millions of dollars to act, folks. Oh, and did you know that Elizabeth Banks plays Betty Brant in the movies? Weird, right? Did you also know they brought her in to voice the character in the game? Just to put her character in the most flagrant display of workplace sexual harassment I have ever seen? Peter, what are you even doing? Are you trying to hump her arm? Thank goodness for J.K. Simmons. No matter how bad the movie or game, he always proves to be the standout character. Parker! That's the third call I got about giant lizards running amok in Gramercy Park. Giant lizards! And of course, Bruce Campbell is back and as great as always. Man, you sure do get hit a lot. You know, there's a handy dodge button you could be using to keep that pretty face of yours intact. Thank goodness the wittiest person in a Spider-Man game is, uh... The narrator. So yes, outside of JK, the movie cast really isn't bringing their A game. I didn't really lay out the movie plot because, well, the game doesn't either. The sky takes a dump and the symbiote arrives on Earth. Flint Marco falls into a pit and becomes a Catlitter incarnate. And Rita Repulsa unleashes her Green Ranger upon the world. <laughs> And all that happens in a quick cutscene after the tutorial level of the game. You only get these portions as act closures once you deal with the missions pertaining to the other stuff I mentioned. And when we finally get back to it near the end of the game, we are introduced to Venom, who is thick. And look, I appreciate the effort here. They at least tried to bulk him out, even if the proportions are insane. His thighs would make Chun Li jealous, and his giant head looks like it's one strong puff of wind from falling off the rest of his body. And they actually warp his voice. Isn't this sweet? Just like in the movies. Was that so hard to do, movie? Was it? And hey, look at that. They don't introduce the character with a punch in the face. <laughs> he shows up and threatens Sandman's daughter to force the guy into fighting Spider-Man. I mean, it all looks ridiculous, and if you think about any part of this for two seconds, it still doesn't make any sense, but it's a step above the movies in my eyes. And yes, I know, they give Harry absolutely no reason to give him a change of heart when he turns good, but sometimes, nothing is better than something. It's true the game doesn't really stand on its own. A lot of these plot points make zero sense without the context of the movie. It's almost as if this was a supplemental product that was made to make you go watch the movie. In terms of the game itself, the less of that mess of a plot, the better. I don't really need a dance-off minigame. Now dig on this. The other stories exclusive to the game are actually a little more fleshed out. And while Toby isn't my favorite Spider-Man, I still like him, even when he's not trying that hard. He still made Spider-Man his own, and maybe he doesn't exactly fit the part to a lot of people. Who expected Jake Johnson to be Spider-Man? It's fine for what it is. I actually had a little more fun with what was essentially the extended universe of the Raimi films. We never got to see their version of the Lizard, Kraven, Scorpion, or Kingpin. And I appreciate when the movie tie-ins don't allow just any character to be used. They had characters they probably knew would never be in a starring role. Maybe that wouldn't have been the case if Raimi kept making movies, but I appreciate the attempt at continuity. That's why you didn't see Venom or Carnage in the first movie game, because that was Goblin's story. And throwing in more popular characters wouldn't make any sense. It would just muddle continuity and outshine the main villain. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, that was Spider-Man 3 for the 360. It's a rush mess with a lot of missed potential, and with more than a couple of aggravating moments. It's still playable, and the web swinging is still solid, but unless you're attached to the movies, uh, I'd probably just play Web of Shadows instead. Alright, that's one down, and uh... Oh god. <laughs> I'm not gonna spend a great deal of time on the remaining Treyarch games. You got the general idea from this one entry, but there are differences. The PC and PS3 versions are the exact same game. The only differences are, well with the PC one you can play with a keyboard if you hate yourself that much, and the PS3 got a special edition that has some behind the scenes videos and it allows you to unlock and play the new goblin instead of just that quick little jaunt you got at the end of the game. 
and it's not bad. I appreciated the original movie game allowing you to unlock and play the Green Goblin, so it kinda stinks that this was relegated to a console exclusive, and since he was already programmed in the other versions of the game, and considering this game is kind of a mess, I would have been pretty annoyed paying full price for this thing. As it stands these days, you can download him as DLC on the 360 version, and... Yeah, I don't know, it's fine. I like the black slipcase anyway. Those differences are really about it when it comes to the HD versions of Spider-Man 3. We don't start seeing massive changes until we jump over to the PS2, PSP, and Wii versions of the game. All these versions were developed by Vicarious Visions. The basic structure is still here. Open world action game loosely following the plot of the movie as well as incorporating extra elements. A lot of the missions play out relatively similar with some tiny differences. For instance, instead of swinging around grabbing hearts with Mary Jane, you will instead just throw her over your shoulder like a used towel and give her a front seat to your spider hams. <laughs> wow, this is a great way to see the city. You should start charging tourists for rides. Game, you started this web swinging mission in the middle of Central Park. What did you expect? This is worse than a roller coaster. <sighs> well, okay, MJ, since you're having such a ball, I guess we'll just keep doing it like this. Come on in, Spider-Man. These guys have a very weird relationship. It even reuses cutscenes from the HD version, but only sometimes. They made their own cutscenes for these versions of the game for the exclusive stuff, but also to recreate stuff we've already seen in the HD game. Giant lizards! So, uh, I, I don't know why they doubled up on some, but not others. You also get some different villains this time around, including Morbius and Shriek, as well as some returning favorites like... Still don't care who this guy is. While the story and basic idea are mostly the same, there are some significant differences in the gameplay. There are now sections of the city controlled by different gangs, and you can see everyone's territories and who's encroaching on other people's territories and help cops take back control of the city. You also now unlock new moves on this cute little web display in whatever order you choose to level up. It's still not super well defined, but definitely a better implementation compared to the HD counterpart. And you get the black suit just after a few missions, and it allows you to swap between the two costumes at any time. Provided that you can't be in the black suit for too long, and you're required a cooldown time before you're allowed to put it back on. I also noticed this game doesn't really jank out anywhere near as much as the other version. But don't you worry, it's still there. Now this version of New York might have little to no people or vehicles, but here's a man in a onesie taking a dump in the middle of Times Square, so... Really this is a much more authentic experience than any other game out there. I feel like there's a lot less jank here because... Well, there's just a lot less going on here in general. Yeah, they have some ideas that deviate away from the HD versions, but the PS2 version feels stripped down, even compared to Spider-Man 2. I mean, just look how this dude swings. He looks like a dead spider. That said, I was far less furious playing these versions of the game. And Bruce is actually funnier here. Feeling lost? Need direction? Well, you could join a cult, or just use the handy point of interest markers that appear on the screen to help show you where to go. And this version has a little more of that cheesy charm found from 2. Plus, new cutscenes means more Jonah. Giant and look at this! All those tests and nothing! Oh my god! Did you hear that? He's actually emoting! Good for you, buddy. Looking at the cutscenes, it feels like they just scripted a bunch of stuff and then cut it up for the different versions of the game. The story still isn't perfect, but here at least we see a little more of that transition into Peter's dark side. And I guess there's actual emotion here. Who knew? Ultimately, yeah. Overall, it's a lesser game, but better in smart little spots. So what differences can be found between the versions developed by Vicarious Visions? Well, the PS2 one has you use buttons like a sane person would expect, and the Wii one, of course as waggle. You shake the stupid thing around for quick time events, you shake it around for combat, and you waggle for web swinging. But on that particular note, I actually want to contend with a lot of complaints people have. The web swinging isn't perfect, but I honestly found it very enjoyable. You have to use the nunchuck and Wemo as your left and right web shooters, clicking a button on each to get the guy swinging. And for the most part, it's a lot of fun. It takes a little practice, and the rest of the game around it isn't great. And like everything else, it could have used a little more fine tuning. But for what it is, honestly, if motion control web swinging sounds as cool to you as it does for me, I tracked down this version of the game for that alone. In the PSP version, I gotta admit, I'm really impressed with this version of the game. Again, you're stuck with bland and kinda janky missions, but this was open world web swinging on the PSP. Might not be as novel today as it was back then, but making this game portable was seriously impressive. But hey, that's not all, kids. Did you want some more garbage on the go? Then look no further than the Nintendo DS version of the game. There's a reason people don't talk about this version, and that's because, well, there's just not a whole lot to talk about. It's your standard beat-em-up game, but like everything Nintendo of that time, they just had to implement the gimmicks the machine was famous for, and in this case, it's the touchscreen. You use it for combat and for putting people in webs, and man, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, 
that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's a safe, generic side scroller that's taken down a notch thanks to this ridiculous touchscreen. Would I call it bad? Well, absolutely not. I just can't pretend to care either. The GBA version is another standard beat em up, and again, it's competent, and if you were a kid, this would certainly entertain you just fine. But personally, I found this a little disappointing. See, the first two GBA movie games actually tried something different. Far from perfect games, but they had highly animated sprites, comic style sound effect words upon impact, and the second game got really bold with this 3D hub world. I mean, it didn't play great, but the ambition was commendable. 3 uses that ugly standard pre rendered nonsense you saw in games like this. It plays similar to the other ones. You beat up crooks as you run around a maze like level marking off checklists, but really, we have more than our fair share of okay ish Spider Man platformers. I don't know. I just wish they had kept that gorgeous sprite art from the first two games. This one doesn't do anything to stand out. Again, it's perfectly competent, but again, not a lot to talk about. That's it, guys. There's some LCD things with cute gimmicks, but I, 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 I can't. I'm at my limit. I'm done with this nonsense. It's finally time to play a good Spider-Man game. Yes, there we go. Insomniac Spider-Man will wash the bad taste of three with some refreshing new ideas that make sense for the wall crawler, like the. Quick time events or uh, random nonsense mini games that break the flow of the game. Mm. Well, at least the side quest makes sense. Is he chasing a pigeon? Pete, I know money's tight, but come on, man. We have to draw the line some. Oh, God. You know, there's a lot of the older Spidey games in this new one. Some things I could do without, but others. Well, it makes me wonder what three could have been with the proper time and budget. Because seriously, the new Spidey is probably the best the series has ever been. And that's saying something because we've had some amazing games. And some of those ideas started here. Unlike what I normally do in this show, I have spent most of this episode making fun of these games. I really don't recommend playing this stuff back to back. It gets to you. Like the movie it's based on, I don't like these games. Everything about this movie offended me when it first came out. I had dressed up as a black suit Spider-Man for the premiere, and by the end of the screening I was screaming, SOMEBODY GET ME A BELL TOWER! This is the first time I'm looking at something that I genuinely hated when it first released, and the age doesn't help matters. But I know a lot of people really like this game, and I was wondering why. But then I realized, this stuff's 11 years old at the time of this video. It's old enough now that people can say, I played this as a kid. Still, something about these games latched onto the hearts of people. You psychopaths genuinely love this movie and all of its nonsense. And you know what? I think I kinda get it. There's a reason why 3 has so many memes these days. And yeah, both the movie and games are hilarious and awkward. While I used to think it was unintentional, looking back on it now, I have to wonder if that was the case. There's an undeniable quirky charm to some of this nonsense, and it's certainly memorable. And despite some horribly frustrating fights, I did actually have a good deal of fun, especially with the web swinging. My beloved Spider-Man 2 and Ultimate Spider-Man just don't have the same sense of scale that 3 provides in the HD version. And honestly, I love looking at the collector's edition on my shelf. It's just pretty. And I genuinely recommend you try out the Wii version, if only for the web swinging. Seriously, that's what inspired me to do this video at all. I almost based it solely on this mechanic. I don't know why this wasn't tackled again or made into its own Wii game. Again, it's not perfect, and the remaining game isn't great, but if you're a Spider fan, I highly recommend at least giving it a try. And yeah, the PSP version blew me away. The web swinging is seriously fun, and it's great to have this on the go. Does this game hold up? No. And honestly, if you don't care about the movie connection, if you want to play a good Spidey game with the black suit, you just play Web of Shadows. And if you just want a good Spidey game in general, well, go out and buy the PS4 version. But now that I have eight different copies of this one title on my shelf, I can't say I hate these games anymore. And yeah, found myself actually recommending some experiences you just can't find anywhere else in the series. Whether you're playing it ironically, out of nostalgia, or you're just morbidly curious, Spider-Man 3, while far from great, had a lot of talent behind this project. And no matter the circumstances, every now and then, that talent shines through. Toot toot, web warriors. There's something real creepy about you, pal. You wanna get weird? Let's get weird. You got a nice face. An anger problem? Living with them? Are you kidding me? Well, it's frustrating. It's like, just get a job. I like your hat. I like how it's not a team or a logo, it's just blue. Would you rather be covered in fish scales or feathers? Scales. 
<laughs> Why, you weirdo? You wanna see me jump really high? I'm afraid of dying, man. <laughs> Who am I? The enemy is in a me. The enemy is the inner me. Do you understand a word I'm saying? You just nodded everything. <laughs> I need to change, and you showed me that. I have an anger problem. Thank you. Can I get a hug?